Today, Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa is the world's most famous painting. It's the first painting that pops into most people's minds when they think of famous artworks. It's the first painting most children learn has some great significance in the world. And generally, its image is synonymous with the word art. Today, it's pretty unthinkable that it could be stolen, but it actually owes its current fame to theft. In 1911, the Mona Lisa was not only stolen, but remained in the thief's possession for a number of years. The greatest art theft of the 20th century, which turned a famous painting into the famous painting. Vincenzo Perugia was born in Italy in 1881. At some point he moved to France, where he worked for a time as a handyman in the Louvre Museum. It was here he learned how things in the museum worked, like how the paintings were kept secured, and what happened in the museum after hours. This is also assumedly where he first hatched the plan to steal one of the Louvre's paintings, specifically the Mona Lisa. Perugia no longer worked at the Louvre by the time he decided to rob it in August 1911. The exact details of how he did it are debated, but the basic facts are such. He entered the museum wearing the same white smock workers at the museum wore. He waited until there was no one in the room in which the Mona Lisa hung, and then he took it off the pegs, took it out of its protective casing, which he himself had made while he worked there, then covered the painting with the smock and walked out. Yep, it was really that simple. Sorry if you were expecting the world's greatest art heist to be in any way elaborate or complex, but the Louvre wasn't as high security in 1911 as it is in today's time. Now that we have CCTV systems and millions of buffoons willing to do anything to a priceless artwork for a few likes on TikTok. It was a time the lion's enclosure at the zoo didn't need signs telling you not to go in because the zoo could trust the general public to just not do that. Another factor was that the Mona Lisa was not quite as well regarded as today. An example of this is the fact that nobody even noticed there were four pegs on the wall where the painting should be for about 24 hours, when an artist who had come to do a sketch of the Mona Lisa complained it wasn't there. The guards initially assumed it had been taken down for maintenance, or inventory, or whatever it is the other workers normally do when a painting isn't up on the wall. But after a few hours, it soon became clear the Mona Lisa was no longer in the museum's possession. Perugia had taken the painting to his one-room apartment where he hid it in a trunk, a slightly less prestigious showcase than it had previously been accustomed. Perugia intended on making a fortune off the painting, which was a bit silly, because the Mona Lisa is priceless. Like, literally, priceless. Who are you gonna sell it to? A wealthy man will want an art expert to authenticate it's the real deal before spending a lot of money on the thing. Then you have to worry that neither of them will go to the police. And even if that's not an issue, why would this person want the painting in the first place? It's not like they can hang it up and show it to everyone. They'd have to keep it a secret. And if there's one thing I know about people who like spending small fortunes on extravagant things, it's that they don't want it to be a secret. Finding a buyer for this famous stolen painting was going to be very difficult. Meanwhile, the theft of the Mona Lisa was becoming big news. Articles about it were being written all over the world, and pictures of the painting were now being printed everywhere. Suddenly, many people who had never even seen the painting were experts on the matter. Everyone knew about the Mona Lisa. A bit like how many people only learned of the Suez Canal's importance and historical significance after a big ship got stuck and blocked the whole thing in 2021. Everyone in the world knew about that when it happened, but I'd bet a lot of them probably didn't even know the Suez Canal existed before that. Despite the worldwide attention, there were few leads in the case. At one point, the police suspected poet and writer Guillaume Abadiner and painter Pablo Picasso, or to use his full name, Pablo Diego José Francisco de Paulo Juan Nubemiceno María de los Romerios Cipriane de la Santísima Trinidad Rios y Picasso. Yes, Picasso's name really is that long. He is Spanish after all. Why use one or two words for a name when you can use 23? Apparently, these two had been involved in buying stolen art pieces from the Louvre before, which Picasso had used as inspiration for his paintings. Despite Picasso immediately throwing his friend Abadiner under the bus and claiming he never met the man before in his life, an act for which Picasso reportedly felt a lifelong shame, it was concluded the two had nothing to do with the theft of the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa remained missing, i.e. in Vincenzo Perugia's apartment, for two years while he struggled to find someone to take it off his hands. Eventually, he contacted the owner of an art gallery in Italy using the pseudonym Leonardo Vincenzo. Starting to get the impression this fella isn't exactly a creative mastermind. This man called in an art expert to verify the painting was real, and when they realized it was, they pretended to go through with the deal after contacting the police. I told you that would happen. 
At his trial, Vincenzo Perugia claimed his only motivation for stealing Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa was to repatriate it back to Italy out of a sense of patriotism. He claimed he became bewitched by the painting's beauty while he worked in the Louvre and he had to return it to his homeland after learning how much of the French Museum's paintings were Italian masterpieces that had been plundered by Napoleon during the Napoleonic Wars. This story of patriotic passion was met with some level of approval by the court, despite the fact Perugia had been very unpatriotically asking for money for the painting and Perugia ended up serving just seven months in prison. In Italy, he was regarded as a great patriot and the Italians rejoiced at the painting being back in its birthplace. This was despite the fact that although Napoleon had indeed stolen many great Italian artworks, the Mona Lisa was not one of them. In fact, it was originally brought to France in the 16th century by Leonardo da Vinci himself as a gift to Francis I when he moved to the country to become a painter in the king's court. 250 years before Napoleon was even born. The Mona Lisa toured around Italy to triumphant crowds for months, but in 1914 it was returned to the Louvre as a pledge of friendship and brotherhood between the two nations. A friendship and brotherhood that lasted all of a few months until World War I, which Vincenzo Perugia fought in. Actually, despite initially being a member of the Triple Alliance, Italy maintained friendly relations with France, a member of the Allied Powers. It wasn't until World War II that the friendship and brothership were thrown out the window. The years-long story of the Mona Lisa's theft and eventual recapture catapulted the painting into the world's consciousness. Obviously, the Mona Lisa was famous long before Vincenzo Perugia, but this story is why everyone knows the Mona Lisa. It is how it became the world's most famous painting. At the time, Perugia was able to just walk out with it, but now the Mona Lisa being stolen is an unthinkable occurrence. Today, you'd be hard pressed to even get a good look at the thing for all the goons crowding around trying to do the same thing. It's almost ironic in a way. It's impossible to steal it now because it's so famous, because someone stole it when it wasn't as famous, and most people don't even know that's why it's so famous. I'm hoping something similar will happen to this channel. Well, minus the being stolen part, I suppose. Well, if you like this video and would like to aid in the channel's famousness, why not? No, no, don't try to steal it. Unlike the Louvre in 1911, this channel is guarded by the top-notch security of an angry Irish man with a stick. Sometimes two sticks in times of prosperity. Anyway, so I have plenty more videos in this style if you like this one, and you can always subscribe to see new videos as I release them. And if you don't, I will get a stick. De Paula, de Paula. Pablo Diego Ho Pablo Diego Jose Ma ah, fuck <laughs> Pablo Diego Jose Francesco de Paulo Juan Nepomucino Maria de los Remedios Cipriani de la Santísima Trinidad de Risi Picasso